Hey Jason, if markets eventually go up, then surely everyone should be making money from the markets. Let's talk about what causes markets to rise and how we can make money from the markets. Welcome to another episode of Money Matters. So credit to a chap called Hong Min. He's the co-founder of a company called iFast. And he gave a presentation that I liked so much that I want to share his talk in this video. It serves as a reminder that we can really rely on the markets to generate us returns if we play the long game. And that by investing over a long period of time, you're almost guaranteed to make money from the markets. So let's talk about the three factors that drives market upwards, the three Ps, population, productivity, and personal inflation. If I could only pick one factor that has a large influence on market movements, that would be corporate earnings, also referred to as profits. Now, let's imagine you're a uh, business owner and there's one factor more than any other that would lead to the success of your business. Well, that would of course be profits. Let's also imagine that you run a simple business let's say a convenience store. Now, one factor that you'll want to decide on is the location of your store. Why the location? Well, because you want access to uh, a, a large amount of foot traffic so that people will notice your store, notice your business. Secondly, also the uh, neighborhood your store is located in, there has to be a, let's say, a sizable community so that you have access to a large potential customer base. And really what it drives down to is population. Now, global population is still on the rise, despite some countries such as Japan and Germany uh, showing declines in their population, but globally it's still on the rise. And a larger population means greater consumption, which thus means larger amounts of spending, which drives corporate earnings, and thus share prices go up, and thus markets go up. So your first P is population. Advancements in technology and society as a whole has driven efficiencies in productivity. Think back to the Industrial Revolution and the Internet Revolution. As examples, think about how convenient it is to travel these days with the advent of the steam train and then the automobile, and then the aeroplane. Prior to this, we had to rely on horses. Also, communication is so instant these days with modern technology. In the past, we only had messengers on horses, pigeons perhaps, or even the telegram. We literally have the world in the palm of our hands with the advent of the smartphone. I still remember being limited to uh, fixed line home phones where I had to remember all of my friends and family's numbers um, in order to give them a call. So um, efficiencies in productivity has really driven greater rates of consumption and driven markets upwards. On that note, I'll talk about Industry 4.0, also referred to as the fourth, in, uh, fourth Industrial Revolution, in my next video coming up soon. It's human nature to always want more more of everything. And I would argue now more so than ever. In Hong Kong, we were traditionally a nation of Chinese tea drinkers. Then over colonial times, we became a nation of Hong Kong milk tea drinkers. In recent years, we crave a Starbucks. And even now, there's a generation of Hong Kongers that's only order pour over black coffee sauce made from single origin beans sourced sustainably. Wow. Let me offer another example. And this is one that I share with some of my younger clients quite a lot. And it's a story of car ownership. Now let's imagine in our younger years, we may be financially limited to certain car brands, but ultimately we want a car. So in the end, after much deliberation, we opt for a sensible, Toyota. It's reliable, it's fuel efficient, and cost effective to run. It does the job. 
Now, fast forward a few years and uh, we are now more senior in our roles. We're, we've developed our careers and we command a larger salary. And we decide we want a Mercedes. Is a Mercedes more reliable, more fuel efficient, or more cost effective to run? Absolutely not. Do we still want one? Absolutely yes. And this is what I mean by humans always wanting more. And this is called personal inflation. This is more than inflation because we are opting to spend more than we need to in our journey of upgrading our lifestyle. So that's personal inflation for you. Put these three P's together and this is the reason why markets always eventually rise. Just look back at the charts over the past 50 years. So remember, like I said in my last video, talking about the power of compounding, play the long game. Hold quality assets, don't buy cheap assets. And be reassured that markets will always eventually rise owing to the three Ps. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Money Matters. Put your comments below. Let me know what sort of topics you would like to see in future videos. Smash the like button, subscribe to stay connected, and I'll see you on the next episode of Money Matters.